It's a neonatal intensive care unit on wheels, and it's the first of its kind in this area. We'll show you how this ambulance is changing health care on the Central Coast. These twins came into the world six weeks early. We were there on the day they went home, and we'll tell you about their special link to the beginning of this hospital. These children are starting early on good eating habits. It's just one of the community programs supported by Children's Miracle Network. And then you put all the cream cheese on top? Those stories and more next on Lifeline TV. Hello, I'm Dr. Bob Morali and welcome to Lifeline TV. We're here at the 16th Annual Children's Miracle Network Telethon. You know, the Children's Miracle Network has raised more than $5 million for children's health care here on the Central Coast. Over the course of the next half hour, we'll introduce you to some of the people who have benefited from the generous donations made to CMN. And we'll look behind the scenes at the making of a telethon. First, it's always exciting when twins are born here. This year, we had some very special twin girls who charmed everyone in the NICU. It was a big day in Salinas Valley Memorial's neonatal intensive care unit last December. The church twins were going home. This will be fun at home. Okay. Born six weeks before their due date, Sydney and Jacqueline took up residency here for the better part of a month and endeared themselves to a devoted staff. It's scary. It was, it was uh, you know, we had to be very careful that we weren't uh, missing anything. They were just about six weeks early. They were very special babies in that they were the product of in vitro fertilization, so the parents have been working quite hard to have babies. It's kind of a roller coaster ride when you're in the NICU because every day it seems like there's something new that surfaces. Um, for example, when Jackie was first born, her head was shaped kind of weird and they thought she might have encephalitis. And then later on, Sydney developed um, an issue with her bowel. And so as you're going through this roller coaster ride, they're really guiding you. The doctors are guiding you and explaining things to you. And, and then the nurses are there just supporting you. Uh, the care I received in the NICU was, it was really good, uh, you know, from the doctors to the nurses, uh, you know, everybody that walked in there was, was really good. I, ca I can't say enough good things about the, the staff in the NICU. I think for the staff and the doctors, uh, we put a lot of time and energy and we worry on our own and we have concerns and when you get a chance to see them through, through the whole process like we did, um, it's just so rewarding. It's, uh, it's one of the unique things we have here in neonatology. And the staff in the NICU, to me was um, excellent. They cared for um, our children in such a loving manner, um, as if they were their own. And I'd walk in half the time and one of them would be rocking them and, you know, holding them, they're feeding them. Those nurses fall in love with your babies, you know? <laughs> they do, I mean. Yeah. You don't feel like you've been away from them all day? No, or at least if you have, someone else has been yeah. taking care of them. Yeah. Like, and not clinically taking care of them, but in a nurturing way, taking care of them. Babies? Sydney and Jacqueline joined their older sister Josie at home, and now parents Jeff and Erin Church have a busy household. Josie's 18 months now, and she was a week shy of her first birthday when the twins arrived. And so for one week every year, they will be the exact same age. But this is more than a story of medical miracles. It is one of fate. You see, it was one of Jeff's ancestors who donated the land on which Salinas Valley Memorial stands, and he spearheaded the effort to build this hospital. It makes you wonder if in some way, Bruce Church on the day of this groundbreaking more than 50 years ago, could have had these two in mind when he worked so tirelessly to bring this hospital to the Central Coast. Having a, a NICU in Salinas Valley Memorial Hospital um, was a blessing for us. You know, knowing that there was a NICU in Salinas was important for me. Just because if anything was gonna happen to them or if they had any issues, someone was right there to take care of it. And it was also, for us, it was a blessing because me having a C-section, I was able to be where my kids were gonna be. You know, I hear a lot of stories about, you know, when people used to have to go up there because they didn't have this, this level of NICU here. And um, I can't imagine me being in the hospital for three or four days recovering from a C-section and him being up with my kids. That would be really hard. One of the newest pieces of high-tech equipment here at Salinas Valley Memorial is on wheels. 
It's the Mother Infant Transport Ambulance. Dr. David Casting, Medical Director of Salinas Valley Memorial's Neonatal Intensive Care Unit, or NICU, gives us a tour of this new ambulance. Well, this beautiful vehicle that you see standing behind me is really the centerpiece of our new regional program, which will establish us as a center for high-risk OB and neonatal care. Well, obviously, first off, it strikes you the inside of this patient care area is a little bit larger than what we would normally find in an ambulance. Um, and we designed it that way in order to accommodate not only the special isolate and, and gurney that it's attached to, but also to give the team extra room whenever they're working on a critically ill patient. The other thing we've equipped it with is a special, what's called air ride suspension system, and that provides a much smoother ride. We'll still feel the road, but it smooths out the uh, irregularities so that the baby doesn't feel a lot of jiggling, a lot of bouncing as the baby's being transported. We think that's important because we want our patients, number one, not to be distressed by a bouncy, jiggly ride, but we also worry about how the effect it might have uh, on that fragile vascular system inside the baby's brain. And so we want to be very careful as we're transporting these patients, providing them with the smoothest possible ride. Transport Isolette is uh, state of the art. Number one, it provides all the basic needs that you would find in a NICU. We can provide warmth uh, in the neonatal uh, transport isolette. Uh, we would also provide ventilatory support so we have uh, a breathing machine for the baby and we have the therapist along with us who will be making adjustments under the direction of the neonatologist to support the baby's breathing. Uh, nursing and medical staff will then be adjusting the various medications that the baby would need from our basically mini, mini pharmacy that we'll be carrying with us. And all this we monitor not only with the uh, electric uh, monitoring, electronic monitoring systems that we have built in, uh, but we also have a blood gas machine that we'd be carrying with us at all times. So at any time we want to find out how the baby's breathing, how our machine is working to support the baby, we can determine that from those blood gases and make adjustments uh, right there in, in transfer. Most of the families who've never been in an NICU have no idea that it even exists until you have a family member uh, or friend who happens to have need for their infant to be admitted to a neonatal intensive care area. So I think for the patients that are and families that are in our region, uh, when someone in their family does uh, come upon a situation where they do need support for a critically ill infant or a mom who's having troubles during pregnancy, the service is now going to be available much faster than it would have been in the past. And this vehicle is going to be the key to making all of that happen. We're here with Sam Downing, President and CEO of Salinas Valley Memorial Healthcare System. Boy, Sam, that uh, NICU ambulance is really something, isn't it? Yeah, it's exciting. And, our, and uh, you know, to see something that's professionally designed, and we were able, it's like making a custom car. Dr. Castings went down there and took a team, and he, he just wanted it designed a certain way, and they were able to do that. Yeah. And then he had somebody else pay for it, which is a foundation. They raised all the money. and. Uh, that's a great experience because he was sensitive to um, how he wanted to have some windows so in case people had kind of a, a motion problem that they would uh, they could have you know a horizon to look at and you know some things you don't really think about at first so it's nice that we could have transportation within like Monterey County in this in this region San Bonancio so that people could just come right here to a central area and a lot of that's based on the relationship that Dr. Castings and the staff here from Stanford have with um, other physicians in the local area. Sam, we've been doing this telephone for, I guess, 16 years now. What kind of impact do you think it's had on our community? Well, the, I think it's had an extremely positive impact on the whole region because what's been fun about the, whole, the entire experience is we're able to give money away, all the way up to Santa Cruz, to Monterey, down to Big Sur, uh, and down to King City and uh, it's a Nativity Medical Center and you're able to help children's programs and people give money knowing it will go to other areas which is great. Yeah. You've, you've always put such a high value on being the top person or having the highest technology in this area haven't you? Well we've always wanted to be a high-tech hospital and it was always uh, you know coming from like UC Irvine which is on the leading edge of research and UCLA and the other big uh, research centers in America 
the technology is kind of a given. So we wanted to be a, a kind of similar to that, but at the local level. And so we did win a few years ago the High Tech Hospital in Northern California. And a lot of that was our affiliation with NASA and the research that we do with them. And then with our high volume in our heart program, then private uh, businesses have wanted to come here and do research with the local physicians. And uh, I think it brings everybody's performance level up to a higher standard. Everybody's energized, and I think everybody raises the bar because they don't want to let anybody down. So uh, I think it's really paid off, and, it, and it, it, uh, I think it kind of pre pushes everybody in the region to move to a higher level. Right. Well, congratulations on another great year and another great year for CMN. Thank you. Well, the other part, too, is we don't want to let the medical staff down, and people like yourselves are right. we're chief of staff. Right. And the kind of where you were here when we developed Children's Miracle Network, and it was right. great to see that we have the a nursery that we always dreamed about. You know, we go up to uh, Children's Hospital at Stanford, right. and we would see it and say, why couldn't we have that here? And we finally do. So we're really excited about it, and thank you for your, your help and all the medical staff and our, our entire community has really pushed for excellence, and I'm excited about the outcome. Well, thanks for your leadership, Sam. Thank you very much. Well, it's our pleasure to present this check for $62,000. Employees of the hospital, $62,000 giving back. Which is just awesome. So thank you, thank you, and thank you to everybody who works at Salinas Valley Memorial. Thank you to all the employees and to everyone. Thank you again. And please call. All right. Let's go, Taylor. Let's go. Let's go, Taylor. Let's go. Ten-year-old Ross Scar of Salinas has a dream. I want to be a baseball player when I grow up. I love playing baseball. I like playing catcher, pitcher, shortstop, second base, third base. A lot of positions. But last December, the Scar family lived a nightmare when a lump was discovered on Ross's neck. They first did a biopsy. They stuck a needle in his neck to remove some of the fluid in it. And after they did the biopsy, they sent us over to do a CAT scan. As a mother, I mean, when you see a lump in a throat. Pretty scary. Yeah, you automatically think of that C word. Ross is the type of child, I mean, it seems like every Monday he has headaches, so you start putting the whole picture together, headaches, a lump, very, very scary. We, we both thought that, you know, we were hoping for the best, but again, like Mary says, it's, you know, you think tumor, you think hopefully, you know, good case, bad case, uh, cyst being the, the best case, luckily that's what it turned out to be. He went in on a Monday. The 19th of December. And he was released on Tuesday. And he seemed to be fine. And he came out and, um, you know, he was a little bit slow and, and the first day or two as far as getting back into his routine, but he just seemed to be fine. And then all of a sudden things changed. I just remember that I didn't really want to talk. I didn't really want to move. I didn't really want to do anything. Well, it was Christmas Eve morning and Ross usually gets up I don't say real early, but he's up usually by, at least by 10, 10.30, and what was it? I think 12 o'clock. Almost 12, 12 o'clock he was still in bed, so I, I went back to check on him, and he was just, I mean, he just looked miserable, and I went over and pulled the covers down, and he was sweating, and um, I felt his head and just felt like it was, it was about ready to explode. It was so hot, and so I yelled for Mary to come in, and she came in and looked at him Took and said... Took one look, and I said, okay. <laughs> Called the doctor and he said, "Get him in Get an now." emergency right now, and his neck was out to here, so it was very, very scary. Today is the 24th, and we're back in the hospital. I see your neck. He's got an infection. Rushed him to emergency. Doctor Block met us there, and the minute he took one look at Ross, he said, "Has he had anything to eat?" And I knew right then, mm -hmm. here we go, back into surgery. Knees kind of buckled and. Ross's eyes filled up with tears and... So did ours. <laughs> yeah. Maybe Santa will come visit you today. Just really scared and worried about what was happening and what was going to happen. We wheeled him down to the doors where they have to you say goodbye to your child. And I remember leaving there and walking over to um, right outside the coffee shop. And as soon as I turned, I looked and all of our family members were sitting there waiting. They had canceled all their plans for Christmas Eve, and they sat there through the night until he got out of um, surgery. 
went into his room. I think it was about 11.30 when the last person left, and the staff there was just incredible. Just fabulous. The nurses, they, they went above and beyond. I mean, they were just right there with us the whole time, laughing, joking. Yeah, they did an awesome job. They did. The nurses were great. They stayed in my room and talked to me. They were just like my family and brothers and cousins and aunts. And every nurse that came on, I mean, they were just, one was better than the other. Yeah. Salinas Valley Memorial, they went above and beyond to make this stay as pleasant as possible. We're here with Kendra Howell, director of CMN. Kendra, we see the hospital helps a lot of people just like Ross. Tell me about some of the other programs. That's right, Bob. You know, it's not just programs here at the hospital. We fund a multitude of community programs throughout not only Monterey County, but Santa Cruz and San Benito County as well. We fund programs like children's dental care and immunizations and therapy programs and just a lot of different things. We're very proud of that. What percent of the money really stays here in the Central Coast? Well, the great thing about Children's Miracle Network is 100% of the money we raise stays right here. We don't use any of it for our operating costs or administrative costs. So when we finish the night with uh, hopefully maybe a million dollars, that money will turn right back around and be donated out to programs and services for kids. That must make people who donate money feel great. I mean, the money stays, stays right here. Well, thank you. I know you're busy tonight. Thanks for joining us, and uh, we really appreciate what you're doing. Well, thank you very much. It's a lot of fun. And they challenged Trent and Cameron. If we made $22,000 as a goal, they would shave their head. This is outstanding right here. Cameron and Trent, big round of applause for these guys. Outstanding. You guys look good. Five o'clock in the morning, Adrian walks into our room and says, um, something's wrong with my brother. So then um, I get up and my husband had gone to work already. And sure enough, as soon as I seen him in his playpen, his eye was really swollen. Aiden uh, came into the hospital with a, a severe infection around his uh, right eye. And it was, it was uh, what we call periorbital cellulitis. He took a culture of his right eye and he said that he had periorbital cellulitis. I had never heard of this. Periorbital cellulitis is an infection uh, in the tissue around, around the eye. The infection can, can go further. It can get into the eye or into the bloodstream and it, or even into the brain. So it has the potential to be quite a serious uh, condition if not treated. When they explained it to us uh, as to what it was, then I was really concerned because they started talking about uh, infection going into the brain and things like that. And, and I was real concerned. So. He, he stayed there and I stayed with him at night and then I got relieved and then I would go to work and then I come back after work, <laughs> stay there the night and I just go straight to work every day. They did let us know in no uncertain terms that it was very dangerous what Aiden had. So when they said that I just felt, it was like, like a cold bucket of water, you know, it just took me back. And then you know, it's, you just have all these flashbacks when, when I was pregnant, how much we struggled through the whole pregnancy. They were quite anxious. Uh, you know, you have a beautiful little baby and then, you know, all of a sudden this raging infection develops around his eye, which, you know, could be life-threatening. So I knew it was hurting because he would, he would cry and he would go all the way around except where his eye was because it was in pain and he just looked and he'd just cry. And so, you know, it's a, not much I could do, that, which is Kind of the hardest part is, is when you see your child and, and there's nothing you can do than, other than wait. They told us that this was the worst case they had seen in a very long time, that um, what he was diagnosed with, it happens, they see two or three cases a year, if that much, and his was the worst. It was pretty bad. So, you know, it was really hard, but I knew he was in good hands. They were just uh, excellent. Salinas Valley Memorial did an excellent job uh, taking care of him. And the nurses are like, hey, Rocky, you know, they would always call him Rocky. And it's like, I want to see the other kid, you know. And it was, it was fun. And Well, Aiden was a very cute, very active little boy. It's funny, even with his uh, right eye swollen, he, he looked like he had been in a boxing match. But uh, very, very lovable, very um, playful little boy. In my opinion, I think we had one of the best cares. 
in particular Patrick. He was so good to us. I mean, he really was. And there was moments when you're alone and you're looking at your child and you know there's nothing you could do for them. And and he would walk in and you know and just say, "Hi mom, how are you?" You know, he's going to do better. He's going to he's doing really well, you know, and don't get discouraged and you know, he always had such nice things to say. All the time when I'm with the patients and their families, I I put myself in their place and ask myself how would I want to be treated if I were in their in their position and you know if I were the patient or the patient's family so I try to um, treat the family you know with with compassion and care and explain things to them and they were just great especially at night because I was kind of I was on the night shift and they uh, they did an excellent job of um, trying to accommodate me as but you know I'm, I was more concerned about him than anything I've always said to my husband that this child is a true miracle to be here. And I knew if he had made it this far, you know, God was not going to take him away. You know, a portion of the money raised by Children's Miracle Network supports programs in our local community. Help or Healthy Eating Lifestyles Principles is one of the organizations supported by CMN and Salinas Valley Memorial Hospital. Here we go. One potato, two potato, three potato, four, five potato, six potato, seven potato. Ah! Good job! These children are doing more than singing. They're learning about making smart food choices. I like potatoes. It's a program provided by HELP, Healthy Eating Lifestyle Principles. Healthy Eating Lifestyle Principles' mission is to combat the obesity epidemic in Monterey County and to increase the consumption of fresh fruits and vegetables as one of the ways of doing that. I like potatoes. I like potatoes. Cooked in a stew. Who likes stew? Potato. Hope's message is being delivered where obesity often begins, in early childhood. Today, these children are learning about salad and healthy snacks by actually making them. Cut this way, baby. Right here. That a girl. Move your hand in a little closer. If they don't have it in their hands, they're not going to get it in their heads. We could encourage them to look at these things if they were plastic. But we feel it's better if they taste it, they smell it, they touch it, they feel it. So they really see the authentic thing. We try to be as authentic as we can. Funny over here. Look at the salad you made over here. Let's put this, same thing, shred it like you did this and put some of the leek in here. Our goal was to do salads. So at the first table, they tore the lettuce. We talked about the different kinds of lettuces. So they're cutting up and preparing things for the salad. The second table was making the dressing. We were measuring and pouring, figuring out how much of everything we needed. This table, they were putting peanut butter on the celery sticks and then putting the raisins on the peanut butter and calling it ants on a log. And then you put all the cream cheese on top? The fourth table then, teacher Raina was putting helping the children spread cream cheese on a cracker and putting a carrot bite. We were making carrot sandwiches. Want a healthier way to make tacos and not lose anything but calories? Help's message is even taking to the airwaves. In cooking segments sponsored by Salinas Valley Memorial Healthcare System, Adrian Meyer shows us how to cook healthy alternatives to calorie-rich foods. Beans, top with all your favorite veggies tomatoes, green onions, cabbage, avocado, cilantro, and fresh salsa. These are things that are common and ordinary that you're able to create very quickly and actually be quicker than some of the fast food types of products that we put into the microwave. Two regular fried taco shells have 195 calories, where two fresh green lettuce leaf shells have only five calories. Remember, you can choose a healthier life. Children's Miracle Network and Salinas Valley Memorial Healthcare System has been an amazing supporter of HELP. Quite simply, without their support, we wouldn't exist. It was one of the organizations that helped found us and had the vision to see what this kind of initiative could do in our community. So, thank you, Children's Miracle Network. Dan 
Dan Green, longtime news anchor, KSBW News. Dan, it's just been, what, a little over a year since Owen was born? You know, it's, it's Owen's second Children's Miracle Network telethon. I mean, last time he was, wasn't even a month old, and, and he's grown so much, you know, and, and, uh, and it, this, is, this is a lot of fun. You know, uh, I know you don't like to blow your own horn, but uh, this is your time. I mean, this is all volunteer, you know. You're not on the payroll now, and, and uh, tell, this must mean a lot to you, this Miracle Network. The past two years have meant so much more because, you know, the first time around uh, when, when Owen was born, you know, we had a couple complications and knowing that the NICU was there and, and so much of it being uh, provided for by the Children's Miracle Network really meant an awful lot. During this year, Owen had, uh, he got to use the services of the pediatrics floor uh, this, this year and we got to know those people and, and so, you know, the projects and the things that happen with money that's donated by people from the Children's Miracle Network we're getting to see firsthand, and, and, and it's such an amazing thing to see. This means so much to the community. Can you sum it up in, in a word or a phrase? What do you think CMN means to the Central Coast? CMN means money that helps kids right here in our own community. It's money that's raised here, and it stays here. Great. Thanks a lot, Dan. We appreciate everything you do for us here. All right, buddy. Thanks, buddy. Planning the telethon begins months in advance, from engineers to cooks to nurses and administrators. Hundreds of hours are spent planning and preparing. Our radio partners, K-Ocean, begin the Radiothon in the Salinas Valley Memorial Cafeteria on Thursday morning, broadcasting the CMN story to their listeners. Setup for the telethon begins at about the same time, transforming the courtyard at Salinas Valley Memorial into a live television broadcasting studio. Stations are prepared in the NICU and on the pediatrics floor. The nerve center for the broadcast is in this truck, where a director and producer call the shots. The signal is then microwaved back to the KSPW station and sent over the air through cable and on satellite to your homes. With Joe Heston, uh, general manager and president of KSPW. Joe, I know a lot of planning goes into this. What, why does KSPW want to be some, so involved? Children's Miracle Network is, is a great program that's all across the country, as you know, but how we could bring it in here and make it bigger was really our challenge back in 1999. We took it on in 99 and have grown it, well, threefold now, uh, tripled their return on an annual basis. And it's, we really think it's a great way to use the power of the television station to get the word out. But the real success is from our viewers, from viewers who are, are we're very fortunate to have and, and they watch and they come through. You've been a great boost to this program here at CMN and I want to thank you and the station for all of your support. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks to a very generous community, it's another successful year for the Children's Miracle Network Telethon. We're glad you could join us. I'm Dr. Bob Morale. See you next year. There we go. In three, two, oh, man. one, understand. go.